we prepare for the Eagles pick to be announced in a moment that we have had a trade in the pick that follows. The Patriots have traded up at 38. We're about to get the Philadelphia Eagles pick at 37, and then it will be the Patriots, not the Bengals, who will pick after that. And announcing the Eagles pick is going to be a very familiar face and voice to everyone who watches ESPN or listens to ESPN Radio. He is an Eagles legend, and he is a member of two Radio Halls of Fame. <laughs> If that doesn't give it away, I'm not sure what will. That's Mike Golick making his way to the podium to announce the Eagles pick. He's like the mayor of Cleveland. <laughs> he, he is. This is his hometown. Mike is from here from Willowick, Ohio. And he's here to announce the Eagles pick. Keep going. I was going to sing. Always great to come back to my hometown, Cleveland Rocks. Yeah. All right, now for the Philadelphia Eagles after a fantastic move in the first round to move up to get Devontae Davis. They've got another great pick here. So with the 37th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select a guard from Alabama, Landon Dickerson. Wow, Eagles fly. Brandon Dickerson, a transfer from Florida State, absolutely spectacular player, had the feel-good moment of the championship game when Nick Saban led him on the field for the final snap. The circumstances of that were that he had suffered another injury, and Lewis, the question on this player has not ever been the talent. It has always been the injury history. Yeah, it sure has, but I'll tell you what, here in the top of the second round, it presents tremendous value to someone who has five position versatility. He can play anywhere along the offensive line. The people I talked to said, hey, look, we think this is a guy who, once we get him healthy 100%, he's going to be just fine. He's a mountain of a man, 6'5", 6'6", 330 plus. And you watch him during the regular season. And this guy was taken, but you see him right there. His punch, heavy-handed. He's the kind of guy in the run game could play in a gap scheme or a zone scheme. He finishes. Offensive linemen talk about finish. Offensive line coaches talk about finish. He's the kind of guy, Booger. I'm sure when you were lining up in that one shade on the inside against the center like this, you were like, oh, boy. It was going to be a long day. And he's a bigger center, too. 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, tough, physical. He's a brawler. And when you think about this, the Eagles allowed 65 sacks last season, 15 more than any other team. They needed to fortify the inside of the offensive line, position versatility. If the medical were healthy, Mel, there's no doubt he'd have been a first-round. That's so the thing. A lot of great talent. There's no question. Had he just not had that last injury, that final injury, that knee injury in that SEC championship game against Florida, you'd have been looking at a late first-round yes, pick. Yes. Guaranteed. Now, you're still talking about an early second-round. He didn't fall that far. No. Uh, despite all the durability concerns from Florida State to that last injury at Alabama in that SEC title game, uh, you know, this is a, a good spot for him. But you really thought some thought he was going to go third or fourth round. Yeah. So for Landon Dickerson, it takes one team. Yeah. Third, no you don't have to feel that you deserve to be there based on durability concerns. It takes one. It's great for Landon Dickerson to not fall that far. Now the thing you just want if you're filled up is you want to keep your offensive line healthy. Look, as far as that offensive line room, they have had some absolute studs. They just can't keep them all on the field that's what you have to have in order to really get this offense really humming along you got to have all your people available yeah. Landon Dickerson you're going to worry about it a little bit but it's worth the gamble at this point in time